heart is always so filled to see the sanctuary filling with God's faithful people come here to worship on His holy day. We are but one of thousands of congregations come together. We are a network and a family of faith, and we are so pleased to be under the blessing of the Lord. We're asking for His Holy Spirit to be here as we join in the worldwide community of faith. Hope that you've already been blessed this morning. We've uh, been going since about 9 o'clock. Our Spanish service, of course, starts over in the Fellowship Hall with the Sabbath School time and a devotional time. Uh, I want to thank uh, the speaker over there who I got a chance to meet this morning, uh, who gave the blessing over there, and I see her family coming into the sanctuary here today. Also, with the boys and girls, we had a fun song service starting at 9.20 in the youth room. It's always fun to uh, get our bodies pumping with all those motions and different things, silly songs, some of them, and sweet, sincere songs. So if you have children, remind them things start at 9.20. Then at 9.45, we transition into Sabbath school time, where all the boys and girls have their Sabbath schools at their different levels, and we're thankful to all the teachers who have been giving them their wonderful skills and abilities to bless. And we had our adult Sabbath school discussion in room 305, 306 today, very stimulating discussion. We're in the thick of the three angels' messages, the deceptions of the last days, but also God's truth going forward broadly and boldly. Uh, you may notice in your bulletin here, several of our announcements are the repetitive ones, but we encourage you to get plugged in and to get blessed immediately after church. We always have a prayer circle, so if you have something that you either want to give God glory and praise for, or if you have a request, a burden on your heart for which you need special prayer, stick by after church and pray with that group. We also um, have, this afternoon, we have our Sociedad de Jovenes program, that's our ending of the Sabbath program, bilingual over in the afternoon. I believe that's 5 o'clock, isn't it? Five. Yeah, 5 o'clock over at Sociedad de Jovenes. Very good. And then we also have, of course, our midweek prayer and study groups. We have our food bank distribution. Come to get fed spiritually and literally uh, if you have that need. And thanks to our volunteers who spend their time bringing the food from the different grocery stores, packing it away in cold storage until Wednesday when it's distribution time. Thank you so much. I think there was a group today that was unpacking the family as it came in. We, of course, are studying through Patriarchs and Prophets in our English group. They've decided to do two chapters a week until the book ends, and we'll discuss why in just a moment here. Pero el grupo en español reúne cada miércoles a las 7 en el Fellowship Hall, ven para recibir una bendición con hermanos en la fe. And young adults, every Friday evening, I get such a blessing from this one, even though I'm far from a young adult myself. But uh, they're going through the Ministry of Healing, and it has been a big blessing every Friday night. Every Thursday, we have choir practice and handbell practice. Isn't that right? Sister Mirta here is in charge of our music program, and she brings such a rich blessing to the church. Uh, if you have any inclination whatsoever, talk to her after service today about getting involved in one of those groups. Next day, uh, next week, of course, is Father's Day Sabbath, and so hopefully you're planning to do something to show your fathers their appreciation. But in the afternoon, the young adults are commemorating with the Emmanuel SDA Church to host a special Father's Day Vespers. So you can see the address there. That's going to be next Sabbath afternoon, and Lorena is helping us details. A little further ahead in our calendar, you probably saw the, uh, the banner as you came in. Our biggest event of the summer is just a few weeks away, Vacation Bible School. Last week of June, heading into July 1st, uh, come. It is more than just a good time, but it certainly is that. It is faith, it is fellowship, it is community, it is food, and it is evangelism. It's our biggest evangelistic effort. I don't remember any specific BBS from when I was a kid, but they all kind of conglomerate together into a beautiful package that helps form, form the foundation of my faith. We've got several birthdays this week. We want to say happy birthday to Brother Margarito Gonzalez. And his son's birthday was just yesterday, so he didn't get on the same bullet, so they're just one day apart. Also, Heidi Ibarra, birthday today. Hello, dear sister. And we got Betty Caballero, Marco Carmona, Lorena Salto, Antonio Del Rio, and Victor Tolman, all happening this week. Sister, since we've got a couple of birthday people in the sanctuary today, can we fire up the organ and say happy birthday to them? Would that be all right?
of these people, reach out to them, call them, wish them a blessing in the Lord, thank them for another year of life, thank them for sharing their relationship with us. After church service today, of course, our deacons will be standing at the doors with the offering plates. If you want to give your tithes and offerings there, we are much appreciative. Our church needs about $2,500 a week to continue to make budget for maintenance of the lands and also hiring our secretary and uh, landscapers and maintenance person and all the ministries that we run. So thankful, thank you for your faithful giving. Of course, if you didn't come prepared to make a gift today, an offering, that's no problem. You can uh, give offering any of seven days of the week using the Adventist Giving website or the phone app. Uh, my wife and I, whenever our paycheck comes in, we go on Adventist Giving, and since we have our information stored there, we're just used to it in about 40 seconds. It's a big blessing. Many of you were here last week when we announced, you folks have known that this has been happening in general for a long time now, about 10 months, but at the end of the next month I'm going to be completing my transition to full-time work for the Southeastern California Conference, and there's a new interim pastor who will be coming, his name is Luis Gustavo Assis. We showed his picture last week, don't think we're prepared to do so this week, but, uh, but anyway, uh, end of June he and his family will be coming to minister at this church. Uh, means that I've got about seven more, if you count today, seven more weeks in the district, and I'm going to be savoring every one of them. That is actually the reason the Midweek Prayer Group wanted to do two chapters a week so we could finish Patriarchs and Prophets by uh, the end of July. So, thank you all for your understanding on that. I continue to be available primarily Fridays and Sabbaths until the end of July, uh, as I am Monday through Thursday up at the conference office. But don't hesitate to text or call or send an email. I am still responsive to those who are Thank you so much for uh, giving your attention to those important announcements. Even more important is inviting the Holy Spirit to be in our midst. Amen? And we do so every week by affirming a passage of Scripture together. We're going to ask Sister Mia to come forward. Mia Hernandez is going to give us our responsibility. Good morning and welcome to church. Please stand and join me in our invitation to worship. I invite you to follow the words on the screen. And please read with me the bold print. Our responsive reading today comes from number 720, God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. It, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She, God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations rage, the kingdoms remove, the utter his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, um, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. May our gracious God be praised as we meet him in our worship today. Please remain standing for our opening hymn.
name displayed wherever we turn our eye. Forgive us, dear Heavenly Father, when we think of a day as just ho hum or business as usual. You are showing signs of love all around us, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for putting, having put breath in our lungs this morning. Thank you for having put energy in our joints and our bones and our muscles. Thank you for having electrified our neurons today, Lord. We want to return all of this to you in glorious praise. We pray, dear Holy Spirit, that you would be made at home here in each individual heart and also in the broader place of your sanctuary, dear Heavenly Father. Please come and fellowship with us. We pray that this service will be pleasing in your sight, and I pray that every single person in my hearing is blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we believe in the principle that some of the best gifts come in small packages. Amen? God has gifted this church with some boys and girls who bring vibrancy and love and faith and faithfulness to this church. And we're so pleased. We are blessed that Auntie Jimena is giving us children's prayer today. Let's ask all the boys and girls to come and sit on the front. Thinking something very mean. To 
to wash our insides, we need Jesus' help. Can we do it ourselves? No. First, we have to confess. That means telling Jesus about any wrong things we done or said or thought, like lying to a teacher or thinking mean thoughts about a brother, a sister, mommy or daddy, or a friend. <laughs> some looks on my kids. Next, we ask him to forgive us. Do you think that he will if we ask Jesus to forgive us? Of course. And then we ask Jesus to fill us up with his goodness instead. Then we'll be inside and out. And the little prayer for today is, God, forgive me for the wrong things I do and for when I look good on the outside. Messy in the inside. Clean my heart and mind so the whole world will know I love you. Amen. And there's always something like a little snip of like a trivia on the, on the bottom, and the title is Explore the Wonder. Raccoons are known for washing their food. The scientific name. Passion Lothar, sorry if I butcher the name, even means washing bear. But scientists don't think they're washing their food to get rid of gunk. Instead, some believe raccoons use their super sensitive paws to learn more about their food. Others believe that raccoons don't have enough, enough saliva or spit, so they dump their food to make it softer and easier to chew. Oh, yummy! So let's see uh, one of the videos that we found of raccoons washing their foot. Let's see. He's so cute. encouraged and 
hearts and to know each and every one of them. Uh, you know that the baptism uh, represents a new stage of life. It's kind of like a spiritual birthday, isn't it? When was your literal birthday? Yesterday. Yesterday, this young man turned 16. He said he's also getting his driver's license soon. So moving on to bigger and broader aspect of life. But praise the Lord, he has not neglected the spiritual part. And so he is saying, I want to enter into my 16th, starting your 17th year of life now, with the Lord by my side, never questioning whether or not we are fully dedicated to him. Baptism is somewhat like, it, it symbolizes a death and a resurrection to new life in Jesus. It, of course, represents a washing, a washing away of your former selfish self into a new life of service. And it's also somewhat like a marriage in that we have vows that we are committing to in our relationship with God for the remainder of our life, and even longer than um, just earthly wedding vows, I would say. And so we did a preview of this. We went through the vows with uh, David yesterday. We discussed if he had any questions on them. We always like to affirm them in church because it helps all of us remember our own baptism day. And we can reaffirm the vows constantly, right? Just like a married couple might reaffirm their vows, either in a special service or just remembering them year by year on their anniversary. So David, I've got a few questions for you. I'm not sure if we have it available for everybody to see there. I'm going to ask the church if we also affirm these vows as well. David, do you believe that there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? I do. Amen. And how about you, church? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. David, do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins? And do you believe that through faith in His shed blood that you are saved from sin and its penalty? I do. I do. And how about us, church? Do we affirm it? We do. Praise the Lord. Number three, renouncing the world and its sinful ways. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? I do. Amen. And church family? Amen. Amen. We do too. Number four, do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in heaven's sanctuary? And do you accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? I do. Amen. And church family, do we affirm that? Amen. Yes, we do. Amen. Number five. Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, that it is the rule, only rule of faith and practice for Christians? Do you covenant, that means promise, to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? I do. Amen. And church family? We do. Amen. Number six. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of His will? Is it your purpose by the power of Christ dwelling in you to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and as the memorial of creation? I do. Amen. And church family? We do. Praise the Lord. Number seven. Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? And as you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation and by your life and word help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? I do. Amen. Church family? Amen. We do too. Amen. Number eight. Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts? And do you believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of God's last day remnant church? I do. Amen. And church family? Amen. We do. Praise the Lord. Number nine, do you believe in church organization? And is it your purpose to support the church by your tithes and offerings and by your personal effort and influence? I do. Amen. And church family? Amen. We do too. Amen. Amen. Number ten, do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And are you, that you are to honor God by caring for your body and avoiding the use of all things that are harmful, such as abstaining from unclean foods, the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, tobacco, and the misuse of or trafficking in any narcotics or other drugs? I do. Amen. Church family? Amen. 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 Number 11. Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And is it your purpose, by the grace of God, to fulfill His will by ordering your life in harmony with those principles? I do. Amen. Church family? We do. Amen. Number 12. Do 
Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion? And do you desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and His forgiveness of your sins? I do. Amen. Church family? Amen. Would have been sticky if we got to this point without believing in the immersion of baptism. Right? And number 13. Do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and the people of every nation and race and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation and of the world church? I do. Amen. And church family? Amen. We do too. Yesterday we were mentioning to David that he's joining a worldwide family of about 20 million fellow Christians that believe that the Bible is teaching these principles. And then we got curious about what country would Adventism be the size of? If Adventism was a country, about what would the population be? It's about like the country of Romania. Isn't that something? So about as many Adventists in the world as uh, the country of Romania has in its borders. So at this time, we're going to uh, head into the baptismal tank. I believe the water has been warm, so hopefully it won't be a cold experience. But of course, baptisms, there's nothing magical or special about this water. Baptisms can take place in rivers and beaches and swimming pools. Back in Bible times, they used to go out to the river to do it, but we're blessed to have a body of water right here in our sanctuary. So give us a moment here. We're going to uh, go up in, into the water, and I think my son's going to move the camera, right? So that we can have a video record of it as well. Thank you. Well, David, this is a happy day in heaven. The angels are rejoicing and Jesus is smiling, knowing that you're making this commitment to him. He committed to you long before you were born. You know that, I'm sure. I'll ask you to take my arm here. Now, David, because you love Jesus, your Lord and Savior, because you want him to be your forever friend in this life and go on into his kingdom for eternity, it's my pleasure to baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Thank you for your affirmation of David's decision. I hope that it is inspiring to you for those who have been baptized to remember your own baptism day. And if you haven't been baptized, may this stand as your invitation. Have not taken the plunge of going all in with Jesus. Come and do it. We have another baptism planned for next week, a mother and son getting baptized, and we have tentatively another one planned in July. So we would love to make preparations and get you ready for that. God bless you. At this time, we're going to move on to our prayer time. So we sing Spirit of the Living God.
We do not forget about those who are not as fortunate as us and who have to worship in secret. Please give them strength and perseverance to run the race. Lord, please be with those who are not able to join us at church today due to traveling, illness, or who have strayed from your ways. Please forgive us for our wrongdoings. Please allow your Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and mind to lead us in the right path, the path to everlasting life. We ask for your love, guidance, and protection in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Uh, today's scripture reading is found in Ephesians chapter 3, 16 to 19. I invite you to turn there with me in your Bibles and devices.
Thank you very much to everybody who has participated today in a lovely service. Thank you, Sister Charity, for the scripture reading, and Dr. Sister Gift for the lovely uh, accompaniment on violin. Thank you to our handbell choir for beautifying our service. I know so many hours of work goes into that, dear sister. And once again, we just want to uh, congratulate David and his family for his uh, recent baptism. Come on forward, David. We've got uh, a little something we want to uh, present to you. Family can come forward, too. Would you all like to come forward one more time? Just in case you weren't seen enough on the previous time, come on up. As they make their way up, we've got a little bit of church business to do. We need to welcome in a new member to our church. Would somebody like to move to welcome David into church membership? So move. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor, say yes. Yes. And of course, there's nobody opposed. This is beautiful. David, we want to provide you with a few things just to commemorate the day. Uh, we've got a baptism certificate for you here. It's got the vows that you affirmed in the service, and it's also got the fundamental beliefs there in it. And so you can keep that as a memory, and we've got a few things also. We want to give you a certificate here to commemorate the day. You can place this in your room, or it can be in the, in the family living area. Just a commemoration that uh, David Gonzalez was baptized into new life in Christ Jesus and membership into the community of faith at the Anaheim Seventh-day Adventist Church on June 10th. Amen? Amen. And if you pass on down there. I also want to share with you one of my very favorite books. You may have read portions of it, but I don't know if you've ever had your own copy. The Desire of Ages is Sister White's expansion on the concepts that are brought forth in the Gospels. How Jesus gave up a life of comfort and receiving praise for the sake of his lost children. Came down, had a life of ministry and healing and teaching, ended with him suffering and dying on the cross for our sins, but rising again to glory. Amen? And I pray that this book will draw you closer in the walk with Jesus. And we also want to give another type of gift. You know, often when it's a lady, young lady getting baptized, we give them the flowers. And sometimes when it's an older gentleman, we give kind of a basket with some kind of gourmet foods in it. And a couple weeks ago, I asked Margarita, what would David really like if I were to give him a special gift? And he said, probably a big bag of Cheetos. I didn't know how appropriate it was to hand over a big bag of Cheetos. So David, this is a little bit of an admission that we didn't know what to get you, but we got you an Amazon gift card. We pray that you'll spend it on something that will edify your life and give you a good summer. So that's for you also. Thank you so much to your church family for welcoming in David and Rhea for this family that is so near and dear to us. God bless you all. Will you guys be out on the courtyard to say hi to all the church members as we leave? We'll have a picture here. Christian, the designated picture taker, thank you so much. Well, when you came into church today and picked up your bulletin, you might have thought that Pastor Mark uh, committed a grievous typographical error on the bulletin. What, did Pastor Mark just put in a bunch of gobbledygook and he intended to put in the sermon title later and he didn't get to it? But some of you, I imagine, when you picked up your bulletin, you said, oh, oh. Do some of us in the congregation today know what the sequence of letters means? Some of us know. Raise your hand if you are aware what it means. This is internet lingo. Yeah, I saw about a third of hands go up. And the rest of us might be a little unsettled. Well, just what does it mean? I'm out of the club. I'm a little unsettled about it. And this is a little bit of circular reasoning because what these letters stand for is the phrase, if you know, you know. And it's true about the phrase itself. When you came in and saw it, if you knew, uh -huh. But if you didn't know, what is it? I'm lost. There are some things that can be only known through experience rather than just being taught or declarative information. For example, have you ever had one of these? These are one of my personal favorite sweets when I want a special treat throughout the week. And if you know the flavor and the substance and the texture, you know about it. If you don't know, I imagine almost everybody here has had this, but if you don't know, how would you describe the experience of eating a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup to somebody who's never eaten a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? You can use some adjectives, right? Some very good adjectives. It's silky, it's smooth, peanut butter and chocolate. Uh, I personally like the ones that have the little Reese's pieces inside of them. I like the added texture, the added crunch to those. But there's no way to help somebody have the experience of it without just giving them one to try. Isn't that so? 
I thought about eating one today in front of you, but uh, I did see a youth pastor do that once in front of an academy chapel. Made all the kids groan as he's enjoying this thing in front of them. But if you know the experience, you know it. And here's another one, taking it a little bit to more of a religious principle here. I want to show you this picture of a church. This is the, and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, this is the Chatra Cathedral in France. A little bit out of Paris there, there's this beautiful cathedral. And as we zoom in on this cathedral, I want us to focus on the circle there that's toward the middle. Here's a closer shot of it. What is that doing there? There is definitely some intricate rock work. Somebody spent a lot of time and energy and effort and money to get all that intricate rock work into place. It certainly makes a pleasing design. But what's in the middle of that rock work? There's just some kind of a grave, just kind of a okay, like, why are they doing all this? And if you look at the vertical windows on the bottom, you see more of just that gray. If you look really closely, you might see just a little bit of like some form and some very slight color uh, deviation, but there's not really any understandable reason why they would go through all the trouble and expense to build this thing and then just put mostly gray panels in the middle of it. Unless you were to go inside the church and look back at the circle from the inside, then you would see <gasps> stunning, breathtaking, stained glass window. This is why they went to the trouble to make the rock work and make the design. It was so that these beautiful colors and forms and the spiritual teaching that's behind them come through when the sunlight shines through the glass and towards you, you see it. C.S. Lewis, who is one of my favorite authors, says that Christianity is like a stained glass window. If you're standing outside of it and looking at it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. What's the big deal? Why are people so invested? Why are people so over the moon to it? He was an atheist, by the way, for the first part of his life. But when he came into faith and he beheld the same Christian principles, they popped, they exploded with a new kind of beauty that can only be understood, can only be experienced from the inside. And I thought that was very valuable and very sweet. The sweetness of faith life with Jesus can only be experienced, not declaratively imparted. In short, if you know, you know. The goodness of God, the sweetness of God, you've just got to experience it. And once you know, you know that you have fellowshiped with God via the Holy Spirit. Today we're talking about the sweetness, the unparalleled, inexplicable experience of knowing God personally. Not just intellectually knowing the principles of Christianity, but of truly immersing oneself in them. Because of course, a scholar can read the Bible and pick up factual information, or a skeptic can pick up the Bible and read it to find and root out little inconsistencies and objectionable things in the scripture to point out. A secularist could, of course, study our 28 fundamental beliefs of the church, and they could probably learn it well enough to get 90 or 95% on a quiz on it. But the experience from the inside, immersed in it, soaked in it, saturated with these beautiful principles and truths, is something wholly of wholly distinct and wholly greater than somebody on the outside could ever perceive or appreciate. The Bible invites us to more than just an intellectual assertion of the principles of God. And sometimes I think Adventism runs the risk of merely becoming an intellectual faith. But we want to say it's more than that. For example, Psalm 46, which we affirm today in our responsive reading, says, Be still and know that I am God. How good are we at being still as a society? Not very good. We want to go 80 or 90 miles an hour. We don't want to be held back to 65, right? We want our hot pocket ready in a minute 30, not in three or four minutes. Come on. How are we as Adventists at being still? Perhaps among the community of denominations, how are Adventists at keeping still and knowing that God is indeed God and through God? Are we better or worse than average Christians at this? Should we be better or worse than average Christians at this? What do you say? Well, if nothing else, God gives us His Sabbath. Amen? We can, of course, any day of the week, find a little time, have a moment with God, know in our heart of hearts that He is God. But 
But God has cleared out a day. He has metaphorically pushed back the clutter to say this is protected time. If you can't do it at any other time on the Sabbath, be still and know that I am God. Please, in your rat race world, in your hamster wheel world, be still for a moment and recognize, soak in the goodness of God. Amen? The next one that gets us closer to the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup experience, but hopefully richer than the peanut butter experience, is Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? What would you say? Show me with your thumbs. More or less delicious than a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup is the love of God. Oh, much more, dear pastor. And let me ask you this. More or less nourishing than the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Absolutely. Jesus invites us not to empty calories, not to a, an experience that might be good right here, but that it's bad for the rest of our system. Jesus invites us to the fullness, the feast, the banquet of His goodness, His eternal principles, His precious promises. Scripture says the world waxes old like a garment, but the promises, the refreshment of a daily relationship with the Lord and His mercies, like the prophet Jeremiah says, they are new every morning. Amen? There is nothing that can substitute a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen? I hate to break it to you, David, but more than these verbal affirmations that you affirm, it is knowing Jesus in your heart. It is walking with your sin. We were talking in Sabbath school about people who, when they got to Judgment Day, thought that they had things pretty well lined up. Well, look, Lord, we did this and this and this and this and this. Pretty good, huh? We should be getting into heaven. Jesus, and I imagine it with sadness in his voice and a tear in my eye, he says, I never knew you. I don't know you. It is these affirmable truths, but it's so much more than that. Uh, right now, the church is going through uh, resumes of potential candidates for the church. Can everything about a potential candidate be summed up on a resume sheet? If we're looking for a candidate, maybe for a girlfriend or a fiancé or a spouse, should we look at a resume sheet and find out all the facts? Oh, born in 1987 in Honolulu, Hawaii. Wow, I wonder if the family might have a time show there, right? The experience, it has to be more than just the bullet points. It's the fullness of the experience. So we've had a couple of Old Testament examples. Our scripture reading this morning came from a New Testament example. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 is effusive. And I love it. It's like he can't use enough big adjectives, beautiful adjectives to describe it. And he says, this is my deepest prayer for you. If you don't still have your Bibles open, please open up again with me to where our scripture reading was today, to Ephesians chapter 3. He is effusive from chapter 1, but the scripture reading chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. Reopen there if you would. Ephesians 3, verses 16 through 19. Right after Galatians and before Philippians is Ephesians. Alright, get in there. I don't put it up on the screen because I want people getting familiar with their Bibles or their devices. Say amen if you're in Ephesians 3. And starting with verse 16, it reads like this. I pray that out of the glorious riches, God has an abundance, doesn't he? I pray that out of the glorious riches, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. That spirit dwelling in us, it's more than just the intellectual assertion of the bullet points, it's the spirit dwelling in us. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Knowledge is good, it's not to be avoided, it's beneficial, you could even say it's necessary, but is it the entirety of the Christian experience? By no means. Learn that breadth, learn that depth, learn that height, learn that width, amen? The profundity of God 
to live in your heart. He's trying to explain it in words, but do you necessarily get it just from reading the words? It's got to be the personal invitation. And if you know the sweetness of living with Jesus, then you know what he's talking about. A, just a mere scholar or a skeptic who reads this says, boy, he's using some fancy words, but who can say what, what the substance is? We Christians, if you know, if you've had this experience, you know. Last phrase here, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. God will not hold back and restrain on you if you will not restrain and hold back on God. Amen. Amen. And it's more about, more than just this whole, this whole knowing and inviting him in, it's more than just about the sweetness, it's more than just about the knowledge, the assurance. It is actually wrapped up in salvation. It's wrapped up in eternal life. Turn with me to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John chapter 17, a full chapter of red letters as Jesus is having his agonizing prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, but Jesus says a pearl of truth that is so deep and so profound that it reaches out to us today. Can you say amen if you're getting toward John 17? And we're going to verse 3. It reads like this. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It's knowing a person, it's knowing a living being, it's knowing a mind, it's knowing your Creator. It's knowing that the one that woke you up this morning is awake and alert and perceiving. And in our prayers and in our Bible study, we are interacting with Him. Bible study, of course, we put ourselves on His ground, His agenda to speak to us. But prayers, God opens us up. God opens Himself up to our agenda. What can be more precious, amen, than God saying, I'm listening, I want to hear what's important to you. Back. Woe be to us when we neglect these wonderful tools, principles that God has given us to know Him and interact with the living God. Amen? If you know, you know. You know in your heart if you know God. And I will know it. I always said this at the beginning of my Bible classes. Knowing God is different than knowing about God. In this Bible class, I can make sure you know about God. I can give you a grade. You can know this stuff. But I actually can't control as your Bible teacher if you know God personally. That which is the greatest goal of Christianity is that which is not quantifiable or controllable in a school setting. It's, it's like a paradoxical thing with our schools. But we pray that it gets rooted deep in the heart. Maybe this whole topic makes you uneasy. Maybe it gives you butterflies in your stomach. Because you say, oh, I, if you know, you know, I don't think I do, Pastor Mark. If I don't, how do I get started? Praise the Lord, He has told us how to know Him. And praise the Lord, He has actually made it very easy for us. In the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, God says this in chapter 29, just a couple of verses past the famous, uh, I know you, the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, and give you a hope and a future. Just a couple of verses later, He says, You will seek Me, and you will find Me, when you seek Me, how? With all your heart. Do it with all your heart. And the first phrase of the next verse says, I will be found by you. It's not a maybe. It's not it only happens to the 10% most elite. If you do so wholeheartedly, if you seek God, He will be found. He will let Himself be found by you. Amen? All He asks is that it be wholehearted. Very similar to what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. How much more, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, although being evil, how much more will the Holy Father give the Holy Spirit to those who sincerely ask for it? Amen? Ask sincerely with a whole heart. And it's hard because we have a divided heart, right? We have a heart with uh, allegiances and alliances and desires that are not harmonious. The Bible says, put away your double-heartedness and clean your hands, he sinners, that you may receive God. In fact, maybe even easier than this image of seek God and find Him when you seek with all your heart, there's another passage in Scripture that makes it even seem easier than that. 
This is a passage from Revelation chapter 3, in which Jesus is revealed to be knocking on the door of our hearts. I don't know if you've ever heard his knocking, not with your literal ears, but in your soul, in your heart. May I come in? May I come in? I have to believe, for me to be able to sleep at night, I have to believe that all people are, at some point in their life, experience this knocking, this invitation. And what does Jesus say? If you will open the door, I will come in and eat. Eat with you and you with me. Jesus is asking if he might be invited in. And it is us on the other side of the door, determining whether or not we will let Jesus in. Will Jesus force himself in? No, but he wants to let you know he's there. And he's wanting to go into a deeper, more intimate relationship with you. Now, I would say that there are degrees of opening our hearts, our minds, our souls to Jesus in life. We could let him just into the vestibule, you know, just kind of like the hallway where the people leave their shoes. Jesus, how nice of you to come visit. How have you been? How is your father? Oh, that's lovely to hear. Well, thanks for stopping by. But Jesus doesn't want to just pay a social visit, does he? He says it himself in Revelation 3. He wants to come in to eat, to dine, to sup with us. That implies a longer conversation, right? A conversation in which there's give and take. So we say, come in, Jesus. Yes, come in. I'd love to have a meal with you. And so in this illustration, as we're sitting there eating, we're chatting, maybe we get to an awkward silence. And maybe with Jesus, with the potatoes in his cheek, maybe he glances over at a side door, and he indicates with his finger there, and he says, what's in that room? Oh, you don't want to see that, Jesus. That's just some old clutter from a previous chapter of life. Um, Jesus says, all right, I could help you clean that up if you want. Oh, Jesus, no, I couldn't bother you. You're my guest. I'm not going to put you to work. And of course, Jesus isn't going to force himself into that side room. But as you keep chatting, he keeps eyeing that door. And eventually you've got to either say, Okay, Jesus, it's time to go. Or, well, you really want to see in that door, Jesus? I've got some junk in that door that you may not be happy with, Jesus. You have the choice to usher him out or to bring him further in to the heart and the soul and let him help you start shoveling it out. And if you've done that, you know it. You know if you've invited Jesus into the recess of your heart, or whether you've just kept him at the vestibule or at the dinner table. You know in your heart, as you consider this now. Now, after that dusty, dirty, cluttered closet is empty and organized, is Jesus satisfied? Maybe you visit for a few more minutes, and Jesus says, you know, the carpet's a little worn in here. And I notice that your paint is peeling just a little bit in that corner. And you say, oh, no, Jesus, haven't we done enough? But is Jesus satisfied, friends? Is Jesus satisfied just having a meal, just cleaning out the closet? Or does Jesus want to do a full renovation? Jesus wants to do a complete transformation in each of us, doesn't he? And he will never force the next step. But he'll just keep eyeing you as you have that conversation with him. There's still that issue. There's still that thing. And you know, in your heart of hearts, if you're saying to Jesus, not this bedroom, not this closet, we're not redoing the plumbing, or have your way in me completely, Lord Jesus. We can renovate down to the foundations if that's what's needed, Lord Jesus. And in your heart, you know, if you've let Jesus in a third of the way, or half of the way, or two-thirds of the way, or all the way. If you know, you know. But the good news is that Jesus is still in the house, and he's still willing to do the renovation. Amen? Amen. And I wonder if you would pull up the carpet, or pull up the floorboards, and go all the way with Jesus. That's what he wants to do in you. And those are the ones who he says, welcome into the kingdom of my Father, prepared to you from the foundation of the world. Because you've let me know you. You've let me 
not just visit in your house, but live in the house of your heart and your soul. And not just as an invited guest, where you made the bed and, you know, bed and breakfast, but you've let me renovate. If you know, you know. Let Jesus all the way in and all the way down. Amen. 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 Truth is, we cherish some of that stuff. We cherish some of that old plumbing or the cobwebs and the moth balls and stuff. Jesus wants to make your heart into a palace. And he guarantees you will be, be more glorious than the house you started with. Amen? Amen? We're all in various stages of letting Jesus renovate us. Let him embark on the next major project today. Amen? Amen? Use some of that time this afternoon. Be still and know, taste and see that the Lord is good. And let him all the way down to the depths of your heart. Amen? I can testify that there is nothing more satisfying and while we, of course, still participate in society, right? We work, we get our paycheck, we do our laundry, our market, we go to a sports game, we enjoy this or that. All of that exists, we know, on the surface, whereas life with Jesus goes all the way deep. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, Jesus wants to go to the next level with you today. Amen. With that in mind, you're going to stand and sing our closing hymn. Number 330, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Pray that you'll stand and sing not only with your lips, but with your whole heart to Jesus. Father, I pray that we would go farther, that we would plumb the depths with you.
because you truly will not restrain or restrict or limit yourself with us. Thank you, Lord, that we can always put you, your kingdom, your righteousness first, and you will see fit that all the earthly needs that we do so often stress about are taken care of. Thank you for freeing us up mentally, dear Lord, to invest in this relationship with you and, of course, the outpouring and uh, resultant relationship we have with each other on the walk of faith. We love you, dear Lord. We consecrate the remainder of our Sabbath and our next week to you. We pray that you will continue to guide us, protect us, lead us in safety, in health, and yes, in the faith, ever deeper, ever closer. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. You may be seated. Your sister Mirta has uh, provided a, a post loop for us. Don't forget that if you'd like some special prayer, there is a group that meets here uh, every week. We're going to have the baptismal uh, David and his family out in the courtyard so that you can give a hearty congratulations. And of course, our deacons are at the doors uh, to receive your tithes and offerings. Thank you. God bless.